you could you could go with the duct tape and just wrap it in order to remove the back side of that pin where it's been rolled over there with the punch there at the factory in order to remove that what you do is you can you just take a bigger size drill bit and drill the head of it off just uh, uh, down below where the bend over part is just drill that part away and then take a punch and punch that out what you end up with is the these pins that was rusted you have to have you have to take them out because the shoulders too big to put a roller back on there so you just you see that when I when I run that oversized drill bit in there such as this when I run it in the end of that riveted part then it left me with a real nice countersink right there so when I put the other pin in there it'll roll right over but these are these are, uh, are of no use now what I'll do is to clean that hole up right there I've just got a the, the it's almost the same size drill bit as that hole is maybe a thousand or so you see how easy it went in there and and that's just a, I use that as a cleanup now see that put that hole there it, it's just no no more larger than using a drill bit as a reamer to ream that hole out and then all of them you make will that's a that's a real good tight fit right there and then on the back side the amount that protrudes right there will roll right over in that little indent right there and that'll be a nice one right there that, that'll be a good one now I will show you this right here peened over a quick run through I removed the uh, cutting tool and uh, tool holder got the uh, cut off blade mounted upside down on the rear of the cross slide and what I did this countersink here I used that number two uh, countersink bit and run it up in there countersunk it and counterboard it at the same time uh, for the rivet effect did that this and did did this all in one setup here it's a little bit overhang but I did not experience any problems this is turned 145 thousandths around it is uh, 437 thousandths long this one is 206 thousand round 405 thousandths long I will turn a 50 thousandths head on this and the outside diameter here is 312 thousandths that's all it takes to make one of these roller pins we're going to cut her off now. And as you can see, we done got another pin made. When you get done with the whole thing, what you end up with is the roller and the pin, like so. That's what we're making. A little thing that I may add on the internet, if you if you do not have the lathe to produce your own roller and pin and you need one these are available uh, on the internet so you can go ahead and buy yourself one of them and when you get it home then you just drill out that pin like we done went and done knock that out of there and then if if your arm is in good condition you would put it in that hole right there like that put it down on like that 
kind of hit it lightly on the side there. I felt that and bottom out is the reason I didn't go about it a different way. But when that bottoms out against that brass part, then that would be, this is the way you do it if you order one. And then you put the chisel punch right there and open, flare that indent out. And just take your small ball peen hammer and work that right around there lightly, flaring it as you go. Flare that out like that. Okay, now, that's really nice, no, it ain't either. If it ain't right, don't pass it, do it, fix it over. It had a little burr on it. I felt it with my finger. Now, that's better. Okay, now, that's the way, and then the little, the little roller rolls. And, and and you do it confirm beforehand that everything is in alignment. And I have found out, if I may give you a little, we just call it Maytag trivia. These governor arms are really soft brass or bronze. Some of them will be yellow brass, I think, and some of them will be red brass. But they're really soft, and if you get one that's bent or out of line, they're quite easy to put back into plum. Another little bit of Maytag trivia. Not all Maytags had that oil groove filed in there. You will come up on one that does not have that oil groove filed in there. It's just perfectly smooth all around. You will find it. To install that, you just put it right in there. You, did you hear it? Did you hear it bottom out? The the little thing there's got enough play in there where that'll turn really good. It bottomed out. You take your punch with everything straight up and down. Flare the back of that out. And then take the ball peen part and go right around there and mushroom the rivet type uh, head that's been formed on that there end of that shaft. Just kind of easy does it now. Don't get too round bunch of swivel. But anyway, you see under, that's a nice one. It rolled over really good. I, that's That was a good tight fit. We, this will not give any trouble. Many years of service can be had out of this governor arm. A new roller, new pin, and I did check the size of the bushing right there, and it's it's really tight. It's got a good thread. It's uh, quite serviceable. These uh, these engines were they were built 1927 up to 1937, and we have stretched their life out to today's date. Just imagine that. Maytag. Model 92 ignition system. Oh yeah, we're going to. We are. The end product here is to time this engine without a jig. That's that's the that's the goal. But all of these parts has to be in good working condition. Now I'm not. That's not to say that you can wrap a bunch of. You actually could roll that roller pin right there with a bunch of duct tape around there, and the engine would start and run. But that's not to say it would be in good condition. This right here, part repair here, this engine will be in good condition. Wh whoever ends up with this engine here will be proud to have it. So as I am now. 